Hello everybody, it's the Lord Magicus, and it is time for our weekly modern stream. Alright, we're going to play fishes again this week, but uh, we need to get our deck in here, so let's do that first. There we go, fishies. Alright, get rid of the old one. Beautiful, there we go. Oops, get back here. All right. Uh, let me resize these just a little bit. Do, 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 do. I need to get these all on the screen at the same time. Like that. Okay. Uh, good enough. All right, there we go. That works. <laughs> All right, we have a nice clean picture of our deck now. Hello, Elijah Mead, the swindler. All right. Yeah, we're, we're playing fishies again. All right, so there you can see our deck. Uh, so basically, this week, what I've, I've changed it exactly the way that I said it, I would at the end of uh, last stream. So we're moving subtleties over to the main deck, because uh, I feel like we've been running into enough like Amulet and Tron where I kind of want to have them in the main. And to do this, I'm just going to put some tricksters in the sideboard, and I put one of the dismembers in the board, too. So... I mean, they're all fine cards. We can always bring them in if we need them, but I think just we'll, we'll try it like this and see if this configuration works fine. I mean, they're all really fine cards to play. It's just which ones you put in the main deck, Just is, it's more of a hedge, just like how you want to gamble in any particular week. I don't think that there's any wrong answer to that. I just, uh, I don't know. We go like this. I have the fourth one in the sideboard anyway, so it's there if we need it. I mean, this is all going to change with Modern Horizons 2 anyway, so, or 3, I mean. Yeah, so, so, we'll see what it looks like at that point, but this is what we're going to do for this week, so hopefully this will give us a little bit better Game 1s. We had, like, the most epic comeback in the history of comebacks last week in our last match. It was absolutely absurd. We go from absolutely stone-cold dead to a uh, surprise being handed a game two and then winning game three on four cards absurd the uh, the power of subtlety i guess it's also the power of Sinos. uh yeah that, that card is just amazing so all right so, uh, let me the chat back on here there we go uh yeah we are we could definitely gonna keep this. Hopefully Sino can find us a land here so we can curve right up into Spalum. We're on the draw, so if our opponent plays something like Ragavan, we can always just dismember it. Arid Mesa, huh? Is this burn? It could be. Oh, we're up against burn, okay. Boris will be very helpful to us here. Uh, so we want to play this on Merfolk. And we're actually kind of hoping for a non-land right now. So we want this to be a 2-2. Ether Vial definitely goes into the graveyard. We do not need Ether Vial in this match. Not with this hand, anyway. If they try to, like, Searing Blaze my scout, then I can just force it. Um, it's not great. I 
I might actually like need to dismember this. Alright. There's another fucking ether vial on top of our deck. We just alright. No. Alright, um Well, we don't really have a lot of great options here. Let's play the vial, I guess, and probably just have to dismember this thing, but we'll wait until it gives us a card. We got rid of a vial and then found another one. This is a stupid thought seize bug. <laughs> Yeah, 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 and it's... Well, they seem to just have a bunch of land, so that's a plus. The Force of Negation is not the worst thing to have there. Well, we were going to take two anyway, so this is basically just us paying an extra two life to kill this, so it could be worse. Hmm. This leads me to think maybe they have, um, Boros Charm. I have to play this Phelan here, right? What's up, Dark Merfolk? We're hoping that Phelan is gonna, like, stave off our game against Burn. Alright, well, sure, we're gonna get Boros Charmed. They only have two cards left, and we do have forces, so we could be okay. We'll try to pitch one to Subtlety and see if we can hold on to the other one. Well, they've just played a bunch of land, so this might actually be really good for us. Okay, this is promising. Uh, I guess let's attack. We might draw a Mutavolt. Play the Sanctum. And if their opponent doesn't do anything, we can always flash in Hexcatcher. Lightning Bolt. That would take us to four. All right, sure. Flash and hex catcher here. We're not going to tap this grow for anything else now. They only have one card, which is definitely like a burn spell that we can counter with force here. So, um, I think we're supposed to just pitch subtlety. But I mean, we're actually not in bad position here. Um, they have us effectively at two because of random map, right? That's good. Uh, let's see. Excellent. The more Merfolk we put in the play, the less chance they have of resolving a spell. Okay, so yeah, they can sacrifice this, put us at two next turn, but that wouldn't be enough to do anything. Any creature is not going to be enough, and we can afford to take one, and that still won't kill us if they cast a spell. Like, yeah, even if they had a spell. Okay, um... I don't think any of this actually matters, so we just pass. Yeah, like, we've got this locked up. They're looking for, like, Boros Charm that's not going to come.
They have no cards, so it doesn't matter. Better not lose? Yeah, well, no, we've got this one. We're winning game one a thousand percent. Their opponent has nothing, so... Oh, let's just let them know never do we not have it. Send the message. We're not giving them any extra information. They already knew we had those in our deck. If it was a card that I hadn't shown them before, like, I wouldn't have put it into play, but they already knew that we had it, so... Let's just... Yeah, we'll do it for fun. Alright, uh... Sorry. So we definitely want Counterspell for this. Uh, we do want Trickster, I think. Uh, this isn't really a dismember match. Subtlety's okay. So Shauna's Tidebinder is also, like, not amazing. Uh, Stern Scalding is actually not bad. We're in the draw here, so I'm not sure how valuable it's going to be. It does counter, like, creatures off the top, but I'm ho like... It could be worth playing over Subtlety. Probably not, but... I don't know, like... This is zero mana, so like you know, I don't. This is not something I want to do on turn one, but at the same time, like I don't really want to do that in turn one either. Yeah, to tap the grove just to flex. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know. scolding and subtlety are pretty close. I feel like I might want Scalding on the play. On the draw, Subtlety might be better. We might want the Subtlety because we're playing a one-drop when they're playing, like, Eidolon, if they're playing that. Alright, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try it like this. And then if we go to game three, then I might try the Scalding instead. Ah, uh, this hand's fine. You can play Trickster in turn two. The best starts for us are when they suspend Rift Bolt, usually. Yeah, okay. Like, that's fine. Because we're just going to put Scout into play, and if they waste the Rift Bolt on that, then that's fine. The Counterspell is also a great draw because it means next turn we can hold up the Trickster and still have Counterspell up. Cool. Like, what are they going to do? Are they going to bolt this? No. If they do, then we just laugh at them for wasting a bolt. Yeah. But having this in play means that the Hexcatcher is now also stronger, too. Like, they might try to play, like, Eidolon? Searing Blaze. Okay, sure. That's fine. Alright. Uh, I don't want to play Vile this turn. I want to play something for two minutes. I can play Vile plus a two-drop next turn, so we'll do that. Um, that is definitely worth a counter spell. it'll be worth a lot of damage. They just suspend another Rift Bolt, that's fine. Right. 
I think this is a fine place to just play a lord. Chances are they probably don't have another creature if they start in turn with Rift Bolt in turn one. Alright, Smash was kind of brutal. They might not have anything else though, so. Well, that's pretty good. So we're protected from like Boros Charm or Lightning Helix. Alright, well if they have another Searing Blaze that would suck here. They kind of have to kill the Hexcatcher though. Lava Spike? Sure. Uh, yeah. Alright, I do have to counter... They have no more spells left, so I do have to counter this. Um, at 11. So I kill them in, like, two attacks. We just have to figure out what to sacrifice here. I could sacrifice Hexcatcher. Uh, I think if... No, if I keep Hexcatcher, we're protected from, like, Rift Bolt, right? Uh, this will... This, We'll be attacking for 7 and then lethal the following turn, so. And we're also protected from skewer the critics that way. I think, I think this is fine. This wins the game, so. We should be protected from literally anything they top deck at this point. Because we have we have enough creatures to throw away to hex catcher that win. All right, we win the match. Excellent. There we go. That's how we beat Burn. Good start to the league. Burn is a very good matchup for us, especially with like forces and hex catchers. Yeah, it's just very good interaction for them. Spayloon is not bad versus Burn. Like, it's a card that stabilizes the board pretty easily. Like, 4 Toughness is actually a pretty big hill for them to climb. Because they can't kill it with just one Burn spell. And if you can count... If they try to kill Spayloon with more than one Burn spell and you counter it, they're just like... They've invested everything and they've gotten nothing out of it, so... Uh, also, yeah, giving all your other creatures Ward 1 is very powerful because that means, like, if they don't kill Spayloon, it's going to be very difficult for them to pick off the rest of your creatures, so. Plus, uh, yeah, it, be it being able to block, uh, like, Swift Spear and not die is really nice. So, alright, got there. Alright, game two. I'm sorry, round two. Yeah. We are on the draw again, so let's see. I think tomorrow I'm probably going to go play some Pauper for the first time in a while. <laughs> it's going to be fun. Uh, okay, so we have an interesting choice to make here now. So, C-Note Scout is really good here. But if we don't find another blue land, we could be in trouble. Hmm. We do have the Tidebinder and a Forest. This, we're on the draw. We have, a, we have some looks here. I think it's worth keeping it. If we find the island, this is actually really good. Um, okay, I have to counter the Thought Seas. I don't like that, but if they, like, take my scout, then... Okay, well... Uh... I'm going to guess here that playing the Vile is actually not that good here. Uh, but just because... Uh, 
I think we want to try to curb in this Faelun here, and if I play the Vile and they, like, Thought sees me again, I need to have, like, Raiders and board. Alright, Ragavan's fine. Uh, we did find the cavern, that's good. Yeah, this... Okay, well, we'll see what happens here. Assume Ragavan's gonna attack. Okay, it goes away, that's fine. Probably... Oh, Liliana, okay. Actually, not that bad. Been a while since we've seen Liliana, though, for sure. Well, the only good news is that uh, they can't make me sacrifice Faelun, and hopefully next turn it will be able to attack Lily. We need to get this card advantage online now. So Bolt won't kill it. Yeah, we have this Aether Vial to discard, which, again, is fine, so... Alright. So it looks like maybe they don't have anything to, like, protect it. That's pretty good. Um... Um, no, C note's fine there. We can draw it. Note that it says newly controlled here, so we want to activate the old one. I'm gonna send both of these at Liliana just in case. Actually, you know what? I'm going to send Svelun there, and I'll send this at their face. Svelun right now is indestructible, so I don't know like what they're going to do here to make me get rid of it. Okay, they're going to... I see. They're going to trade a lot to deal with this. Uh, that was a mistake. I don't really see a good reason to do that. That didn't really feel like that was that great of an exchange for them. Um, this member feels pretty relevant against this Bowmasters right now. We're going to need to get it off the board here, so, yeah. Okay, well, we're definitely killing off that Shieldred. They can block the Svelun, I guess. Actually, if I don't attack with Svelun, like, yeah, none of these blocks are actually good for them, so... I guess we can just do it like this. That seems fine. I mean, they don't really have anything at the moment, so... They don't. They can't really attack. They just seem to have lands that don't do very much.
They put a grief into the graveyard. Okay, so what does that mean? Oh, that's very good. So I guess I can, I'll just attack with the scouts here. Uh, yep. It's going to come back, and it's going to ping this thing, but we're going to protect it with Hexcatcher. Let them pay for the ward first. They just gave up. All right, excellent. That's fine. So, okay. This looks like this is probably Scam, but they're playing Liliana the Veil, which is not a card I'd normally expect this deck to be playing. Usually Hexcatcher's not that great against them. Uh, Force is probably not what I want. I think I do want Trickster. Yeah, Dismember, I think I want that. Yeah, we did win game one here, so that's good. So, Tide Shaver's not amazing. Uh, the only thing is they have Bowmaster, so, like, probably should have some Stern Scoldings, and I don't really think the Hex Catchers are very good either. The Scaldings do counter like the Ragavans and the Bowmasters, so that's kind of useful. They also counter Grief, which is good. I guess I can keep like one. Sure. Spreading Sea is a little bit awkward with Bowmasters, but at the same time, it's harder for them to get rid of than the Tide Shaper, so it gives us Island Walk forever. I feel like this is a matchup where Stern Scolding is probably a little bit better than I even imagine it is. I think the only thing it doesn't really deal with is uh, the Shieldred, so. But it does counter most of the other threats that they have, so. Like, even some of the older stuff, like if they're playing, like, Seasoned Pyromancer, it can deal with that. Um, I guess if they have Croxa, it doesn't deal with that, uh, but it does also counter, like, Dothy Voidwalker, so tons of stuff that is very possible they're playing that it is relevant versus. We're just hoping that they don't grief scam us, I guess, so. Which means on the draw, we probably have to keep, like, basically any hand that has, like, lands and creatures. It doesn't really... We don't get to be picky about what we're keeping. We just have to keep as many cards as possible. On the off chance that they do scam us, so... Uh, I mean, yeah, look, this actually is not a bad hand at all. They could have removal here. Um, that's not ideal. I'll play the vial, I guess, just because if they have like bolt or fatal push, then I don't. They don't get to use it now.
Then next turn, if they just play like Void Walker or something, we have Dismember up for it. Or if they. I guess if they go for like Bowmasters, we have it too. Basically, I have to keep anything. Yeah, the removal of agency from the game before you can start. Uh, yeah, I 100% agree. That's why I think, like, it is a mistake for grief to be legal in this format. But, I mean, what are we going to do? Like, I don't really have a choice. It's This is where we're at in this fucking format, so. <laughs> God, I did not want to draw another land. All right, uh, I guess we're just holding up Trickster and Scout here. I'm not going to play into them, like, using removal in my turn right now. Yeah, no, I 100% I agree. I do not like cards like Grief when there's no Force of Will that, like, cleanly deals with it. Uh, sure. I guess I'm just gonna let them attack and then hopefully Trickster and kill stuff. Force doesn't even, like, you have to have force when they go for the grief, right? Like, that's it. And if you don't have it, then that sucks. Um, Hidebunder is actually pretty fine here. We will not put that in the graveyard. But I'm definitely going to double block this Bowmasters. One more card you lost after they inevitably reanimate. I mean, yeah, that's also true. I, I guess it's worse in Legacy, yeah, because they do have Reanimate, which is absolutely just uh, fucking absurd. Grief is not a re reasonable magic card. None of the elementals really are. Alright, I want this to go away. I mean, they might have another Bowmasters. Okay, no, that's fine. Yeah, I mean, sure, not dead after all. So I've effectively just traded my a creature with this card now. But what are you going to do? I mean, it's, yeah, sure, if they have that, they, they have that. Well... I don't know, like, it was also possible, yeah, see, the, this is the other thing, like, if I only assigned one blocker to this, then they can just stomp it before damage after blockers are, and then we don't get to kill it anyway, so that was what I was concerned about. They did pretty much exactly, like, they had everything, so... I wanted this thing to die, but like I was I was expecting they might have one of the things. I didn't necessarily expect they'd have two of them. But, uh, yeah, look, that's, that is another card to be concerned about. No, we're, well, we're not doing anything about it now, but, it, like, our, our main, like, end game here is to get Svelun in play and try to catch up in cards that way, so... Alright, I guess they're going to attack first. Alright, let's hope that... Interesting, okay. Um, I guess I'm just going to take two here. Uh, 
I want to see if I can like nail this catacombs or no, I don't think they're going to use it. Now they have played around it pretty well here. Um, I don't really have a good way of getting through this. All right. Yeah, it, it is. Like, I... Tidebinder kind of underperforms for me. It doesn't really do what I need it to do. Spreading Seas is not really what I want to see with Bowmasters on the table. Okay, I'm going to kill this thing right now. I know it's going to effectively cost me six life, but I don't really... Like, this thing has to go away. And I need to do it while they can't reanimate it. Right. How they attack here is going to indicate kind of how much removal they have sitting back. I am guessing they might have another Bone Crusher Giant. I don't really have a good answer for. Legion's End. Okay, sure. I'm playing Blood Crypt tapped, all right. I don't seem to have anything else right now. But I don't really have, like, yeah, I don't have a lot going on right now, so. Yeah, I'm, I don't know how we're going to get back in here. Opponent either flooded or sandbagging removal. Well, yeah, that's definitely possible. I'm hoping that flooded is the answer, but... Okay, grief is not good, but it could be... It could have been much worse than that, so... I don't think they're going to attack here. Yeah. Turn two is just a bit, yeah, maybe. Uh, I guess it could have. I think I just need to keep any creature at this point. But no matter what, yeah, the thing is, like, no matter what happened, oh, fuck, we're dead. Yeah, all right, like, the explosives is just going to end the game. I, I can't beat the board now, so. All right, uh, that was rough. Um, 
Okay. <laughs> yeah, well, they had everything they needed on on that turn to really kind of do what they needed to. So, if even if we had only single blocked the orc, it would not have died. Like they would, they could have protected it no matter what. Uh... Kind of want to have counter spells here. No, because they had stomp. Like if we only single blocked it, they would have just stomped. Um... Maybe I'm just gonna play like counter spells. Yeah. They they wouldn't have played the not dead then. Think so. So we have Trickster to hold up here. All right. I guess we're just hoping they don't grief scam us. That's all. All right. That's good. I mean, if they play a Bowmasters, that's fine. Okay, sure. Like, their chances are they're going to try to play a 3-drop here, so... This is a good turn, I think. Uh, you know what? They have Liliana the Veil for sure, but maybe we just have to accept that and just hope that they don't do it this time. Yeah, we have the backup one, so I'm a little bit more inclined because if we draw the another island, then we can play counter spell plus like a two drop. If they just play like Bowmasters right now, it's fine enough. Ooh, that's not great. I, I guess maybe the Lord would have been better to discard. No, 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 yeah. Yeah, okay, of course they have this. It could be, but I'm really hoping that if I draw the land here, I can play a creature and then protect it. Oh, fuck, this subtlety is not really what I wanted. No, you know what? I think I agree with that. I should have discarded the Lord. It's not clear to me how much it's going to end up mattering, though. Um, I think that's okay. Well, there we go. That's a plus. Interesting.
I think there's definitely some merit to trying to trade with this thing, but I think I'm also at the point where I'm trying to race it, too. They're running low on cards here, and I'm hoping that we don't really have a lot else at the moment. Okay. They put grief in their hand. Exiling Shieldred. Uh, I think I just subtlety this, right? I can keep the counter spell for next turn, and there's not really a lot they can do. Yeah. I think I, I pitched the Master of the Pearl Trident here. Yeah. And then, yeah, I have this to protect me for next turn. They do have Croxa coming, but it will take up, like, their whole turn to do it, so that's the thing. Whatever their next turn is, like, it's going to take them a whole turn to do it. Because they're going to, they're looking at playing a 4-drop. You may as well attack, like, there's the... Why would you not attack with this? <laughs> oh, are they, they might be thinking about subtlety here. Okay, well, if they if they do that, they sacrifice this, and then we just counter the subtlety. Yeah, we're not going to play any of this one. Yeah, that's... Um, actually, I just attack with Svaloon, right? Because they can, they can cast the subtlety and block the trickster, so... If I only attack with Svaloon, then, yeah, if, even if they play Subtlety and block, it doesn't actually make any difference. Do I actually care about this? I don't really think so, right? No, yeah, the crux that matters a lot more. Sure. Uh, what did they do with the grief, actually? They put it on top of their deck. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, it do, it still takes up a turn. Let's see. Oh, they're just going for Croxa. Uh, yeah. No, thank you. Another subtlety would be pretty good. Yeah, the counter spell didn't get wasted now. Oh, bully! Fucking hell! All right, we're we're in business now, lads. <laughs> the <laughs> okay. So uh, I think we get to attack for five here. Yeah, <laughs> fucking ever. We get everything. Holy shit! All right, awesome. <laughs> We might actually just win next turn. 
They do have a counter spell under Dothy, right? So what I want to do is like try to scolding the grief. Yeah, we lead on the scolding for sure. But I mean, if they also might just attack, right? So because I yeah, they they want to try to race here, so. Yeah, they're not doing anything, so. They have no cards left, so if they attack with a subtlety, they die. Oh, okay, they're going to lose a life here. Alright, so what are we going to do? Yeah, that's got to be a scary feeling right now. Interesting. Yeah, I would not do that, opponent. That doesn't seem very, really good to me right now. So they still have a counter spell underneath Voidwalker, so we do have to be aware of that. Yeah, I think we if they I think we are supposed to play subtlety no matter what they do, because we do have to force them to use this. Yeah, that's fine. They might have, um... They, they might have drawn a, uh... Bowmaster. It's possible. But this is fine. They, they also just might have nothing they can actually, like, use. Well, that's really good. So now even if they have Bowmaster, we just have the Tidebinder to counter the trigger, right? Uh, okay. Yeah, so even, in like, even whatever the best thing they have here is not going to be enough. That's great. I think that means we just win. It's hard to imagine what they could possibly play here that's going to get them out of this. The Spaloon's indestructible. I mean, the Tidebinder protects us from pretty much anything we care about right now. They are evoking grief? Oh, I guess they want to play the Croxa, right? Uh, so I just play the Tide Binder and let the yeah, they they can put the Crocs in play. No, I no. The reason is they they're evoking the grief because they want to put the card in the graveyard so Crocs can come back. That's the that's the reason. But it doesn't actually help them here. So, uh. So, like, they have two creatures in play, but it doesn't matter. They have no cards in hand, and we have, like, a board that kills them. So, actually, just putting Crocs in play guaranteed loses the game. I, yeah, like, it doesn't really matter. Like, we can take six, and that doesn't make any difference. I, it, countering the Evoke trigger was also possible, but they do have Castle Lockthwain, so they could have, like, still drawn a card and maybe found, like, Bowmasters or something. Incentivizing them to commit to a Croxa that doesn't matter is, I think, actually a better choice right now because they have zero cards. They just lose. They, now they can't activate this. They have absolutely zero outs. Yeah, I, I don't think that there's anything they can... Like, it doesn't matter. We just mash everything in, so... Yeah, okay, we win. Excellent. Beautiful! Beat Scam. It's a good start to this league. Yeah, well, we, I mean, we ended up drawing the Dismember, so we just had it, but...
I don't know what card they could have drawn to change the math there, but definitely casting Croxa didn't do it. Um, so we're up against Gigantha, right? So this means it's what either like I don't I don't any deck that this could be. I don't think this hand is like going to be fast enough to beat this. I'm mulliganing this. This is actually a lot better, uh, and I think that we probably just get rid of Spalum. Uh, prowess. Well, I think we do have to keep this. We put Vial in play, and then we have uh, the Scout, and hopefully that's good enough. Get rid of a 3-drop, because the chances that we're going to get to 3-on-3 three three is probably not great. Ooh, Blood Crypt, okay. I mean, yeah, sure. We both mold to 6, and they have Thoughtseize, so... The good news is that we have both Vile and Scout, so it really doesn't matter which one they take. We still have a chance of curving. So, there's also a possibility they might just take the Dismember. It depends on what they're doing. They took a Master of the Pearl Trident. That's really surprising. Hey, look who it is. Alright, uh, Merfolk. Let's get this going, because we're actually going to need Vial this game. Thoughtseize Bug. We scried one away at the beginning of the game, and of course it's the first card we draw, so, you know. Death Shadow. Oh, God. Alright, now we're going to lose the Dismember for sure, right? Has to. Like, you cannot let me keep this card. Now, to be fair, like, Svei Luna is also really bad for them, so I can see why they would do this. Uh, no, do not put that in the graveyard. That's one of the only things that's not a land that I would actually want to draw here. Beautiful. Let's just make Vile pointless. Yeah, I mean, I guess. That's possible. Knight's Whisper is a card I have not seen played in quite some time. Are we playing, like, fucking 2018 Magic right now? Like, solving, we see, like, Croxa and fucking Death Shadow and Knight's Whisper. <laughs> Okay. I'm trying to think, like, are we supposed to care about Ragavan right now? Because I don't think that we're supposed to. No, I, I feel like there's a lot worse things that we need to keep the Dismember for. Alright, well, I guess we are dismembering it after all. Um, put them in the seven. I could just put them to nine here, right? I threw away a death shadow, which means I probably have another one. Yeah, I was thinking about it. Like, it's probably I. I yeah, I'm reconsidering just uh. If I, ta I could attack them for three, and that theoretically puts us in a position where we could win next turn. But it's not likely. And the thing is, like, if I do that and then they, like, shock themselves and play a shadow, this dismember is going to get real bad real quick. They probably do have a shadow already, so, like, I kind of regret playing the Lord this early if I'm not going to attack. Yeah, I could attack with the scout for two. If they trade, that's kind of okay. And if not, they only go to ten. So even a shock wouldn't be enough.
I like this plan a lot better. We're just hoping they don't like fetch and shock. Okay, well, so yeah, now it doesn't really matter. They can pl I want them to play like two Death Shadows now. Go to 11. Okay, that's probably good for us, right? They put Gigantha in hand? What the fuck does that even mean? They... Okay, so they probably don't have a shadow, right? I feel like if they had it, they would have used it here. Yeah. I guess I'll leave this on too. The only thing we can't play if we draw it is Spaloon, or like, I guess Tidebinder, but... Most, we can play any one or two drop using the lands in Vile and still have Dismember up, so... I feel like now it's probably safe to attack. They'll probably... Play. We need to draw a creature this turn. It's important to have a creature right now. They, they probably have, like, a bolt in hand. That's my guess. Just give me, like, a, a lord or something. Yeah, they do have a bolt. Okay. That's naturally, like, the only thing we couldn't really do here, but... They would, they definitely would have fetched and shocked if they had a shadow, so... Which means they might just be playing Gigantha next turn, which we will just dismember, and we'll probably just take Vile up to three and put in Svaloon and hope that's good. what we're hoping for anyway. Spaloon I think was a good draw here. Just not when we it, not with the violin too, but you know, we were playing the odds that maybe we'd draw like Hexcatcher or a Trickster or something. It looks like they didn't find the land. Go to seven. Did you find a shadow? They might have. Okay, there's a channeler. Definitely got to kill that thing. Oh, and there. Oh, fuck. Okay. Um. Okay. Well, this has to attack. They have two cards. We know one of them is Gigantha. I can kill the shadow? I guess... I could just kill the channeler and... This is good. Yeah, this is gonna attack for a lot. I, th I think I have to tick the vial up so I can either cast two dismembers or whatever I draw, but probably not both. So I probably need to use to figure out what I'm using my dismember on now. Uh, like, it's not ideal that Chandler is there. Mm. Yeah, so Trickster can deal with the Channeler.
Yeah, we probably have to kill this thing. I have to be worried about Scourge of the Skyclave, though, because they might be playing that. Oh, yeah, that is true. We do have Tidebinder, so... It's true, like, Trickster would help us against that as well. It's not really what I wanted to draw here. Uh... So I don't think I can attack. I don't really see a good reason to play the island at the moment. We might have to be worried about something like Unearth, though. That feels like something they might be playing in this deck. With tons of uh, really small creatures to bring back. Yeah, that has to attack, so we get a 9. We're going to play Gigantha. I assume they're going to play Gigantha. If they do that and we draw Trickster, we actually just win the game. Or Dismember. Alright, they have one card left, so... We have top decks that win here. I guess Ottawara also would do it. So there's, what, four cards we can draw that just win? That's not one of them. However, I, I, uh, I can attack with this Faloon just to draw a card, but I think if we do that, we're probably dead. Munivolt's not bad. No. Um, let's see. They have a Lightning Bolt we would pro Like, we have to block this or die otherwise. Yeah, I, we probably do need the card. Um, in this case, we'll, Mutavault will just animate itself after we draw. I think. No, I guess we'll, we can decide. We yeah, we have a we have the chance to figure out what mana we're gonna need. Okay, that's not ideal. Okay, right, well, <clears throat> they're in a position where I, if they don't have another creature, okay, well, that's bad. They can't attack with the Gigantha, right? Don't they just, like, lose to this? Yeah, but they dashed it, right? So if I just block the Gigantha, I have five coming across. So if I block Gigantha, well, I guess enough. I I guess it depends if they have Bolt, right? Yeah. Okay. Just hope they don't have Lightning Bolt. Hope they drew like a land or something. I don't think it really matters at this point. They either have it or they don't.
What are you doing? Oh no, opponent! This is this is uh that's not gonna work out for you. You that was the incorrect one to hit. You got greedy and you died because of it. You should definitely have killed the Mutavolt. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, boy. <laughs> we'll fucking take it. Alright. Dismember, Merfolk, Trickster. Those seem good. Don't know if Stern Scalding is that is going to be good or not. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Alright. Um, okay, how do we... Alright, let's think about this. Uh, force of Negation is probably not good. So, we think about Spreading Seas and the other counter spells, maybe. Any other timing but that one would have been... Yeah, when... Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> wow, that was incredible amounts of greed in their part. Yeah, they got super punished. Alright. Uh, I'm looking at these cards here. Um, I don't think Hexcatcher is amazingly good. But it, it is... It is a flash creature, which is kind of nice. Um, subtlety is also probably fine. It is possible they might have something like Scourge, so I don't know how good Tidebinder is going to be. I mean, our island walk is probably vulnerable to. I think that the subtlety is probably better than a hex catcher. I'm not sure about these guys either. Like, I'm kind of inclined to have the spreading seas a little bit just because it's island walk they can't get rid of. Maybe something like this. Just because I don't know what cards they may or may not have access to, so this kind of hedges against, like, a variety of nonsense. So I think I'm going to go with this. Uh, honestly, this isn't really the best hand here, but... We'll probably have to keep it, I think. Like, they are a Thoughtseize deck, so, like, at some point you do have to just kind of accept that you're just going to lose cards, so, yeah, sure. I probably will take Master of the Pearl Trident. There's some argument that they might take the trickster if their hand, is, like, if they have something like a scourge in their deck that they are worried about, so. I feel like they probably take the lords. Most people, just like in this kind of hand, go with this. Yeah. See? Called it. So that's one of my favorite games when you're getting, like, thought seized, you know, to just try to call what card they're taking. Alright, well, we drew C Note Scout, which is, like, one of the best things we could have drawn here. Now we get to put this in play and make sure we try to draw gas. Uh, no, we're going to keep that on top. We, we, we want all the pressure possible. Of 
Question is, how much do we want to attack them for? Uh, because if they fetch shock, they can go to 14. If I attack them at all, they can play a shadow next turn without having to play another fetch land. So I'm kind of inclined not to just attack them yet, but just to play this lord that they know about. I do have subtlety and trickster though, so there might be value in trying to put uh, a clock on them. If they do play shadow, I can always like subtlety it away or like then try to trickster it afterwards. Hmm. It'd be kind of a dangerous game for them to do this, so you know what? I'm gonna do this. I think because I just because I have enough stuff to interact with the creature, yeah, okay. So they are going to do that. I'm going to 15. All right. Yeah, they're not actually like. Yeah, so that's fine. This puts them at 14, which is okay. That's kind of the acceptable number right now. Twelve. Uh, Shadow. Let's not do that, please. And just hope they don't have another one. They put it on top of their deck. They don't didn't play anything else yet, so they probably don't have another one. We might have another unholy heat. Orcish bowmasters. Uh, okay. I'm gonna trade all three of these things with this. I guess I'm okay with that. So they, they have a shadow and a mystery card. All right, Night's Whisper. All right, I mean, they're putting themselves pretty dangerously low, so, like, these tricksters could very easily punish them for this. So I guess I'm just using... I mean, I might just, just let them attack this turn. Because if they just play another one, I can just trickster it. Like, I'm, I'm pretty sure taking four is not the end of the world here. Okay. Scourge. Oh, they look, this is so good. Excellent. They have one card left, and uh, that's going to die. Let's hope their one card is not very good here. Um... not get greedy. I think we attack for five, right? Put them to four. And then we'll trickster this thing down, and then hopefully the Lord will be enough. They might be inclined to take the damage. Okay, they're going to go to seven here. All right. Well, they haven't played a fetch land, so um, they can't just, like, surprise kill me unless they have, like, team or battle rage. And just put Gigantha in hand. Sure. Well, we're going to definitely play the Tide Binder on this. So you know what their last card is. 
I go to five. All right, so I have to block that where I die. Ugh. Bowmasters was not really what I wanted to see here. I don't have a good way to come out of this if I don't draw a land right now. Alright, uh, that's close. The tricks do this. If I draw a land next turn, I can island walk to victory, just maybe take six. I think I have to do that, right? I don't have another choice. We have to draw, like, an island next turn. I need them to draw nothing. And I need to draw uh, an island. That doesn't do it. All right, come on. Land and we win. Come on. Even a fetch land would actually win here. Come on, land. No! Fuck! We were so close. <laughs> this member is not the one. <laughs> oh, no. All right. Um. Yeah, no, we're dead. We, we just lose. We had a chance. We had so many chances for this, but just didn't get there this time. Okay, uh, what do we want to do here? I don't really think Tidebinder is that useful against them, but I don't really know what else I want. Kind of just like I, I might just pull, bring these back and just take the tide binders out. I mean, stern scolding is also not the worst card, but I mean, counter spell is also somewhat okay. But uh, this might be better. Just keeps the curve lower, so the chances that we can get through for a win are higher. We get to be on the play, so hopefully that's better. Well, we put ourselves in a position that last game where we could have won, but we just needed the deck to give us a little bit of help. This is not actually that great. Unfortunately, we have four mana sources here. We don't really have, like, a lot. Ugh, fuck. The scouts can help make sure that we draw stuff other than lands, but this is, like, such a weak hand versus, like, Thoughtseize. I don't know that going to six is going to be much better, though. Like, I would have to keep... Like, even if I took away a land, I would have to keep this on six, so I think I have to keep it on seven. But I'm... This is not, like, terribly good. All right, we need to find something that's not a land. Uh... No. Anything that's not a land stays on top. But we can't play the Hexcatcher because of the Bowmasters. I might actually just play the other scout here. No. It... No, maybe I'm supposed to play the Lord. I'm not doing anything yet. I guess if I play the 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 Lord here, the next turn I might be able to play Scout plus another two drop if I draw it, or even just the Hex Catcher, but it's a little bit risky. We still don't know what their hand looks like. I think I might just attack with this and then play the Lord afterwards just in case. 
they might want to unholy heat this. We'll keep our Lord alive. Yeah, they might just like bolt this or something now. Sure. All right. That was always going to happen then. So, but there is a chance they might have used it on this. So, yeah, that's a card. Ooh, that's rough. Honestly, I kind of want them to take the hex catcher because this is really awkward to play against their deck. Like, yeah, if they have bow masters, this is so bad. Yeah, they took the scout. That probably means to me that they do have Bowmasters available. Uh, Svaloon is exactly what I want to see right now. <clears throat> They're not going to attack. Okay, we might see Shadow here. Thought sees. Um. Let's let them surveil one. Well, I guess that what this means is that we're going to lose this either way, so if they have Bowmasters, they're going to have to show us right now. There's nothing I could do about it. It was going to kill off something anyway, so. They only have two cards left, so that's a plus. I'm not sure. Yeah, like, if they want to trade with these things, I am actually okay with the Dragon's Rage Channeler going away. So, if they have another Unholy Heat, this is going to be bad, but have to play it, so. Yeah, the thing is, Channeler will be a problem on its own, so I kind of need it to trade with these things, but we're doing what we can with this, so. At some point, if they just have too many cards, then, you know, it's, it just ends up bad. Alright, well, that's plus. Show me Unholy Heat. Do not show me Unholy Heat, so I can freely attack with this. That is really good. They must not have Heat, because they definitely would have used it here. Uh, so I guess it's possible they could have Lightning Bolt. So I think they don't. Okay. 
All right, so here's the thing. Um, we're basically just betting on whether they have Lightning Bolt or not, right? So they don't have another red source. So if they don't have Lightning Bolt and we tie chamber this Blood Crypt, we do actually just win the game. Because uh, we'll have Island Walk and we'll be able to kill them next turn. And they should, they theoretically should not have a way to get rid of it. And otherwise, I guess it's, they could have another Bowmasters, but to go after Lord of Atlantis... I think I have to just play this, though, and hope. So I feel like if they had heat, they would have used it here. So I'm thinking they don't. They do have Lightning Bolt, and they use it on the Lord of Atlantis. That's actually really surprising. So I have more Lords that I can draw here, right? So them Turning off their red mana is pretty big, though. Now I guess a Lord just wins. Okay, that's a Scourge. It's a 1-1, one, one, so... That's a significantly bigger. So I guess, yeah, just a Lord off the top wins. Mm, that's not... That's not it. They have one card left. Which they may or may not be able to cast. Uh, so I can, if I attack them with Spheloon, this thing becomes 8, like, I'm not going to block it, so. Spheloon's indestructible, can't die here, I don't really need to block anything they have, I'm not in any danger, and I think having the extra card off of Spheloon right now is worth a lot more, so. I think we're attacking with Spheloon, right? We can go to 18, and then they'll have a 1, a 1... Uh, this will still be, this will be a 2, and then this will go up to an 8, which is fine. So I think we attack with Spalin, because we need the card rip more than anything else right now. That's a pretty good one, to be honest. Sure. They actually block to preserve their life total. That I think that might be incorrect. Alright, we'll play the Ether Vial. It could come in handy at some point. It's basically, we find an Island Walk Lord and we just win the game. Uh, I am not blocking that. So it's very possible that they're stuck with just red cards that they can't cast. Though, they should have put Gigantha in hand. That seems wrong. Now, here I probably do have to block Scourge, right? I have to block at least one of these creatures. I don't think it matters which one, but I do have to block one of them. It still might be worth attacking with Spheloon just to get another card, since I'm going to... Like, they're, they'll attack with both of these next turn, so... I can just block this and take five. That doesn't seem good, I think. Because I'm still kind of dying in, like, about two turns anyway. I think it's better to throw the C-Note Scout in front. Just have C-Note block this thing. So, yeah, I'll go to 12, and then they'll have this here as a 2. So, 10. Yeah, I think that it's... I think that Spheloon still attacks. Give me a card. Give me something good. Okay, I mean, that's fine. So we could have also, like, drawn Trickster off of that, which would have been just great anyway. Uh, I don't think Subtlety is the one that we're looking for right now, so that's going to go to the graveyard here, and there's not really a point to playing the island. I want my opponent to live in fear. Okay, Bobble.
They attack with just Scourge. Okay, let's think about this. Uh, so if I draw Trickster, tap down the Bowmasters, they have two blockers, they block Spaloon and Tide Shaper, and they take nine and die. Or, I'm sorry, they would only take... Um, no, they would not be dead. Uh, they would only take six. Trickster into a Lord. Uh, I mean... They can't cast Bolt anyway. I think I'm not blocking this yet. I, it only puts me at four, and I'm not in the danger zone yet. Because I still can't cast any red removal spells, so... Fuck. Alright, uh, this is where things get a little bit dicey now. So, I have to block both of these next turn. I can attack with Sphaloon to get one more card. Uh, I can throw the two C-Note Scouts in front of these. Or actually, I can throw like Mutavolt and Ness in front of these guys. And be at three... Uh, then I have to worry about the orc army. No, well, if I if I attack with two creatures, that's not lethal. They're at they're at eight. I need that would only be seven damage. The the problem is now if I attack with Sveloon, then this is going to become a three. So I would actually have to block uh, this, this, and this because this will ping me and put me to three. So they have three lethal creatures. So now I have to block with three things. Yeah. Here now. Yeah, at least if they attack with these, I only have to lose one thing here. So, I guess I'm just playing Sanctum and Passing. I only get, like, one more turn. I think next turn I may have to attack and just go for it. But I think I have one more turn here, at least. Possibly two. I have to I just have to be careful about my life total. Uh that's not a good sign. They also have to be careful because if they shock themselves too much then okay, well they playing the channeler does not seem like it matters a whole lot. You basically just told me I'm attacking this turn no matter what. This is, well, this is going to attack me for three, and I have to block um, at pretty much everything else, right? Okay. Let's pretend we're not going to die. I need to attack with at least three creatures so that Island Walk wins the game, assuming they don't have any, like, removal spells. I don't... They would have to have, like, Fatal Push or something, so... Uh... I think if I just... Yeah, I mean, I can, I can attack for a Lord. I have, one, I have that chance to win. I think this is going to attack me for three, and then I'm probably dead anyway, so... I die next turn even if I don't attack, right? Because this is three flying I can't deal with, and I still have to block, like, basically all of these then, or, yeah, I'm fucked. So, and then Svalun can't attack at all. I'm only going to get to see one more card anyway. So, yeah, I'm going to crack the Flooded Strand. We'll pull out um, a Breeding Pool, I guess. Alright. Do we find the Lord? Alright, we lose. I mean, I guess I'll let them block, but we're dead. <laughs> uh... 
Uh, we've I think we've played two so far, so there was there should be a uh, six more that we could have drawn. So maybe like 12, 13% chance. Alright, we lose. That was games two and three it came down to the last turn where we had it we had top decks that we could have drawn to win the game, but we just didn't get there. We needed a land in game two and we needed a lord in game three. Couldn't get there. It was really close. But we we tried. We gave it our, we gave our deck the chance to help us, so. I mean, we've already seen like several times today where we like scryed a card off of the top and uh, or like, you know, explored a card off the top and then just ended up drawing it anyway. I think we did it with like Aether Vial and with Svaloon now, so <laughs> Thought Seize Bug. <laughs> Yeah, one of them, like, our opponent actually, like, did uh, Inquisition us, and then we just drew the card anyway, so. <laughs> what are you going to do? We had the tools, we had we had the chance, but we just didn't get there. Alright, we're on the play this time. Uh, this hand kind of sucks. Not doing anything on turn one, like. And these are not, like, terribly strong cards. I'm going to mulligan this. This is a much stronger hand. I think I'm just putting Mutavault back um, because I want to be able to cast the rest of these. C Note Scout is like the best one drop we have. Yeah, it, it is kind of crazy. Alright. Uh, they chose to keep seven, right? Yeah. Land is not really what we wanted here, but we'll take it. See what our opponent's doing. Fuck. So many of these, like, fucking Rakdos decks. <laughs> Can we just, like, not, please? This is, like, the third one in a row. At least it wasn't a Mutavault, that's true. There's only one other one in the deck, so... Because I only have two in the Simic list. Yeah, okay. So is this, like, Scam now, or... Surprised they didn't take Tide Shaper, because I'm definitely going to use it. And then hopefully I'll just Tide Shaper them again next turn and maybe that'll just be enough. <laughs> so we don't have the Island Walk plan going on. We may as well go for the uh, try to mana screw them plan. Eight C's is sort of okay, but the the problem I have with it is that okay. Well, this definitely looks to me like maybe Bowmasters is in the future. Oh no, it's not okay. So I'm definitely going to Tide Shaper the fuck out of that. Just in case they end up finding a creature to play, I want to have this member up, so I'm going to do this. But I mean, this is pretty good for us, probably. Commercial District. So this is, are we just facing, is this Jund? Like, what's going on here? I 
All right, they just got rid of a fatal push that they're not ever casting. I mean, this this could also be is is this possible to be like a creativity deck or maybe like maybe Valakut or something? They are all mountains, so like you always have to consider that possibility. I don't know. I feel like Jund is the most likely with Thought Season Fatal Push, but oh yeah, it's creativity. Okay, excellent. We win. Why would you play the fucking mind and tell me what you're doing here? Yeah, they played. The, I maybe they just didn't understand that these are not mountains for this anymore. So yeah, we're definitely playing against creativity, right? So we want the counter spells. That's that feels like such a mistake to tell me this. Uh, <laughs> what spreading seas is probably all right because it does slow them down. Mm. I don't know that subtlety really matters a whole lot against this. Tidebinder is probably good. Uh, pick your poison might be okay because it can get rid of the fables. I don't know. The dismembers are probably worth keeping because they can kill off the tokens. You get rid of two more cards. This might. Uh, I'm really torn about stuff like Svelun in these matches because. Svelun is a slow card, but it does refill your hand for, like, the late game. Uh, and I'm thinking about bringing in Tricksters just because having Flash things to play makes holding up Counterspell a lot less miserable. I do have to worry about potentially Ren and Six. Eh, that's not ideal. Yeah, Ren and Six in the draw is kind of shitty. Maybe on the draw, Spalun is a little bit too slow for this. Um, I almost want to bring Subtlety back just because of that. Alright, maybe we'll just do it like this. We can potentially in the play. Uh, this hand is probably good. We have Force. We get a few chances to draw another island, but we have Force, Hex Catcher, some creatures to play. Okay, mine, sure. If they play Ren and Six, I can at least like do something about it. That's probably fine, right? I think I... Do I play this here? I think I'm supposed to just play the Tide Shaper and just start attacking them. Yeah, I know you're going to do it, so... Bitter Reunion, uh, okay, that's not really the one that I'm worried about right now, so, sure. They discarded an Archon, oh, okay, so they have, like, Persist, right, okay. It is a sorcery, so they, I can at least force it. Uh, 
And they can't, like, Thought Seize me and then cast Persist. Okay, what are we doing here? Are we going to cast Fable, maybe? Well, they don't... This isn't a mountain for the Dwarven Mine, so they can't do it on turn 4, right? So they are going to Thought Seize me. Okay, I guess they get rid of the Force here. I can make them play around Counterspell if I draw the Island. Or an, and Hexcatcher also still protects us a little bit. It's not great, but we'll do what we gotta do. I'm kind of priced into playing Hexcatcher now. They took the Hexcatcher. What does that mean? Isn't the Force the important card to be taking right at the moment? All right, what's your plan? Do you have like another blood crypt plus like thought seize and then persist? They must have some idea of what they're doing here to get through this, or maybe they, maybe they actually um. Fable? If I just, like, force Fable, don't I just win? They have a fucking Besage you that doesn't actually do anything. Uh... Okay. They still just die, though, because I have Merfolk Trickster in my hand. I'm attacking them for 9, right? This is pointless. It's... It actually doesn't matter. I could also just play the Lord and attack them for 8, but I have Island Walk, too. But, uh... Yeah, all of this is winning. Um... Okay, we win. Excellent. We just fucking destroyed creativity. It was not even close. Just, like, smash them into tiny little pieces from which they'll never be put back together. Okay. Great. Three and one. This is excellent. This is going very well. And our one match loss was, like, so close. We had winning chances in both of our losses, which is a good sign for the deck. All right. We are on the play versus Paul Blart Malkop. I'm going to tell him I love your movie. <laughs> All right. Uh I think this is okay enough. We can keep it. We don't have like the perfect density of creatures for vile, but it's good enough. <laughs> All right. <laughs> he said, I have three. <laughs> All bangers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Paul has some tricks up his sleeve, I'm sure. <laughs> All right, Scalding Tarn, what are, what are we doing here? Sacred Foundry, okay. 
Oh, is this the, the Convoke deck? Alright. We might actually be casting Subtlety here. Uh, yeah. Let's get Island here, and I think we just play Lord of Atlantis. It says that we have the best island. All right, the Raven Inspector. Ah. <laughs> uh. Okay. Uh he has four cards left. I feel like I'm supposed to force this. Yeah, we're bonding over our island. So he likes this island, and he also likes the Lorowin ones. Alright. Uh, that's a really good draw here, so... Can attack with the Lord here and just bile in this this one. They try to like get cute and double block. And now if they manage to convoke out a creature, I can just tap it with Trickster and get in another big attack and then maybe follow it up with Island Walk. If I can find a Tide Shaper. Fetch is good for us. Lowers the life total. No, signal Pest is annoying, but we do have Trickster to help with that. Ooh, Bushwhacker, okay. He only has two cards left. So, this will... I feel like I do need, to, like, Trickster is saving us four life, or I'm sorry, it's saving us, like, five life here, right? So we probably should do this. Yeah, now they have basically wasted their attack, yeah. It's going to do nothing, so we get a breeding pool so we don't draw it. That way, if we draw Svelun, we can cast her. Leave this on two. Um, let's see. I think if they want to block, they have to throw away two creatures for a lord, and I'm probably okay with that, because then that means they take seven damage. Yeah. That's an exchange I would definitely be okay with. So they go to three here. So now they have to be very careful because if they if they if they attack, then they could just uh die, so draw a card. Okay. That's good. That's a good sign for us. Now all of our creatures are currently lethal, so. Canyon, okay. Inspector. Sure. Detonation. Alright. Okay. Island Walk wins the game, so. Yeah, this is a good attack. But now, now we also have a really good attack back, so. Um, yeah, I think we're just going to trickster down the signal pest, so. They have to block all three of these creatures, right? So, if any one of these gets through, they die, so, yeah, they just throw away three tokens in this. Uh, 
And then we will just trickster down a signal pest, and hopefully that'll be good enough. Okay. Deals one damage to me. Get a blood token. I'm going to draw a card. Pitching a sacred foundry that they can't use. Get rid of the signal pest, that'll save us a bunch of life. So now their attacks are not very good again. And we have four things that they have to block or they die. Okay, a rebirth is fine. That's pretty good. Um... Just make them lose as many creatures as they can so the signal pest is as weak as possible. I can block one thing with Hexcatcher. I need them to not find, like, another Bushwhacker. Okay, that's... I don't... Yeah, I'm not super concerned by that. Okay, so we're probably in good shape here. All right, we win. All right, uh, all right. So I think we need spreading seas for this. Uh, all right. I think that we're supposed to have dismember for this, and I think we're supposed to have Marfolk trickster. Uh, okay. What do we not want, though? Um, I don't think Pick Your Poison is going to help us a whole lot, because they have like a bajillion artifact tokens to throw away. They're very much going wide. Um, I'm not sure how good Hexcatcher is going to be. The Force actually does seem okay. It did help a lot because it, we traded one force for, like, uh, artifact on board and then prevented them from getting three bodies. So, I mean, that was a pretty good exchange. Uh, I guess I'm thinking... So, if they have, like, Loxodon, Duddlety is, like, probably okay against it. Tidebinder might be a little bit slow for that. Um, yeah, venerated looks at it. So it, it puts counters and everything, so they can do it in like turn two or three. Uh, feel like it's probably not a Spaloon match. Spaloon goes tall and they're going wide. Tidebinder has some uses. It can counter the the triggers in like Signal Pest, and it can also counter the triggers in like um, Bushwhacker. So it is sort of like a counter spell to that. I guess maybe I just take out like two Hex Catchers. That could be it. The dismembers seem a little bit odd, but at the same time, like. It's probably worth having it just because eh, they do have a few creatures that probably do need to die on site. Mm. 
I'm going to do it like this. Each individual creature here isn't great in its own beat. Do you not use them here? Uh, uh, so Stern Scalding, I think, is actually pretty good against... Um, I was going to say, it, it's, it's pretty good against the uh, Rakdos deck, actually. Um, it does counter the it counters most of the like the important stuff like solitude and, um, and grief. So like the el elementals we actually care about it hits. I think we have to keep this. We have a force for if they make up tokens. We have creatures to curve out with. Um, but yeah, it it, it also count like a lot of annoying creatures like bowmasters and ragavan get countered by stern scolding. It's also really good against, like, Yawgmoth. They can counter most of the stuff in their deck. Uh, so. I would say, like, Yawgmoth is probably the most important one. I don't really like the fact that we're so reliant in Waterlog Grove here, but we need it, so... I need the Tide Shaper for this, because we have the Lord, so we're going to definitely want it for this. We're definitely looking to force them destroying this. I think I just get rid of Trickster here. I, I probably should keep this force just in case. So the question is, do I play Lord here or do I play C Note Scout? I think I'm actually supposed to. I actually maybe no, I'm supposed to play Tide Shaper here. So let's attack first, because then next turn I can follow it up with Lord of Atlantis, and they might not have another land. And if they don't have another land, then this might actually just win the game. All right, we win. They didn't have another land, we won. 4 1! And our one loss was like really, really close. Like two games that we had like top decks to win the game. So uh I would say this configuration looked pretty strong. Um we had tools against pretty much everything. Some tough matchups, for sure. Like they weren't like give me's for the most part. Uh we, we did have to fight. So uh but yeah, no, this looked pretty good. C Note Scout once again just like proving that. This is, like, undeniably, like, the strongest uh, one drop we have access to. And it is entirely worth splashing. Even if you're not playing Pick Your Poison, It's I think it's still worth playing the green mana base just for C-Note Scout. At least for the time being, until we get to Modern Horizons 3, which is going to completely change our deck. We'll probably be back to Mono Blue, because I can't imagine that not playing with, like, Flare is, is going to be ideal. And also with, like, um, our... Harbinger of the Seas, yeah, we'll want Mono Blue for the most part. So we can actually cast all of our creatures even under our own moon effect. But I mean, until then, C Note Scout's gonna it it shows that it is still like ridiculously good. It's yeah, I'm I'm very happy to have it here, so. Uh yeah, I don't really have much else to say. Like we've been playing basically the same 75, just for, like with different splits of cards in the main versus side, but I feel like this is a lot closer to where we want to be. And I mean, it's probably no surprise. I think Nikachu's list is like he's playing like mono blue, but it's also very, very similar to this, where I think he has like force and subtlety in the main deck. Maybe like two dismembers here, so and I on the other strategy of splitting trickster between main and side is also something I kind of took from him, and I think that was a good plan, because there are matchups where like you know we want to have a creature to bring in, and trickster does interact against a lot of the creature matches, but there's also a lot of matches where like trickster is also not that impressive, like say against like uh, Tron or even like Amulet sometimes like doesn't do all that much so it's better to have higher impact cards in the main deck stuff like subtlety will probably win you the game or like force will probably win you the game against a lot of the decks that you want to cast it against like if your opponent taps out for like a one ring then you force it they might actually just be losing there so it makes sense and then with our mana base we, we can't i don't think we can play four dismembers but i think two in main and then having a third to bring in is fine it's not entirely clear if, like, 
the interaction other than that is like exactly in the right numbers like it's it's possible like maybe spell peers could be in here somewhere maybe a fourth force instead of a third counter spell stuff like that you could definitely play around with but i feel like in general like this is pretty close to what we want like pick your poison it's also pretty good against um you know some of the other artifacts nonsense we can see uh most importantly, like the Scion Leyline decks, if they're playing that, because then you can get rid of the Scion and just crush them. But I mean, it, it does come in against some other decks. Like if you ever go up against like Mark Tide, this deck, this card is like fucking incredible. So it is very powerful. It's one of the more powerful commons that sees play in modern right now. Uh, what was I gonna say? The only thing that we probably don't have a good answer to right now with this list is uh, prowess. So. You could definitely, like, maybe work out your interaction package to have, like, some chalices in the sideboard, because that's probably the best card we have against Prowess, but even then it's, like, no guarantee that we're actually going to be able to beat them with, even with Chalice, so... Yeah, I don't know, it's... It could just be a plan where we just accept that we're probably not going to beat Chalice or, or Prowess and uh, we just go from there, so... Okay. You know, it's, it's that time again... Uh, I want to thank everybody for being here with me. Really, really appreciate it. Uh, yeah, if you're watching the replay, uh, do me a favor and click on the thumbs up. I'm gonna, I'm going to put the link to, uh, my link tree here, and you can find the YouTube channel. It is all on the link tree. All of my social media and stuff is on there, too. So if you're watching the replay in the chat, there you go. You can find all of the places that I'm at that matter in this link here. So yeah, I always read and respond to the comments in the replay, so it means a lot to me if you click thumbs up. That's it. I don't ask for a lot. I don't ask for like a lot of money or anything. I just want you to love me. That's it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, other than that, uh, I guess let's see who, who's playing Magic right now. Somebody playing Modern that we can go and take a visit to. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. It's always fun to see what's going on. Let's see Vintage Cube. Was it Anazid? I think it's... Oh. I think, okay, we might be... Let's see what's going on here. Okay, uh, this looks like an interesting... Alright, cool. I am going to send you to Anzid MTG. He's a cool guy. It looks like he's playing some modern, so I'll do that. Um... Everybody, thank you for being here. I'll see you again next week. It was a beautiful 4-1. Victory for Sveilun once again. Murpho, Tier 1. Awesome. Modern Horizon's going to take it to Tier 0. And I'll see you next time. Later, everyone.